Hello everyone, we're excited to be back with a brand new series of Level of Detail, brought to you by the Games Development Department here at Staffordshire University. I'm David James and I'm the course director for Games Design and I'm joined by uh, Professor Chris Headland, who is the head of the Games Development Department and Associate Lecturer Jamie Nicholas. So today we're heading into outer space as we play one of the biggest games of the year so far, Starfield. It's the first new universe from the award-winning Bethesda Game Studios in over 25 years and it's been described by its makers as Skyrim in space. So we're going to have a quick dive in and Chris has already dived in. Chris is playing Chris. as me today. You can see that the character we've got in front of us looks a lot more like me than it does Chris. Yes, this is Jamie Nichols cosplay. Do you want do you want to just <laughs> show us? Right. Just like show us this character because Jamie, you spent an inordinate an inordinate amount of time setting this up, right? This is this is 20 hours in. This is my character based off of me. Uh, and it's my spaceship as well uh, that I spent way too long trying to put together. What do you think, Chris? I'm good so far. Uncanny. <laughs> Uncanny. Big fan of that scarf. Did that cost a lot of money? A lot uh, of space money? It's a quest reward, so it actually cost a lot of, you know, um, <laughs> it was quite emotional getting that scarf, I'll be honest. Yeah. No, I did shoot of, a man for it. Oh, a um, lot of time. Yeah, so we're now jumping into uh, my spaceship. It's E to interact. Ah. So just for context, you, Jamie, you've put a few hours into this, right? Yes. And I have never played this before. This is Chris's first, first, first real bash at this. So <laughs> we will see how we, we'll see how we get on. Casting no judgment immediately. This is this is my spaceship. I, I, I honestly, I haven't had the ship for long, so I can't tell you if you're going the right way. However, that is a dead end. I just feel like a cupboard. Yeah, I've got a few. I love a good cupboard, me. So, no. okay, right, that's that's where I came from. Yeah. Oh, wait, we're we going there. this way. We go. Or is it? I don't know. So, one thing I'm keen on for this... Ah, this the armoury. One thing I'm keen on for this particular playthrough, as soon, once we can get Chris into it, the cockpit, is when we've done level of detail before, we've, we've come up with some sort of uh, missions for the games we've played, and we've come up with them on the fly. I think the Legend of Zelda one turned into something far less grand than it should have been and we wanted to uh, basically find clothes for the main character uh, which we'd somehow walk past at the start. So. Not with this one. Hmm. I've played the Minish Cap. Sure. And I have, I've never finished it. So it goes out of here, Em. Without a shirt get, as well. Get, can, he, can he put some clothes on, please? I, <laughs> that is on us to find, I think. Don't I ask genuinely me how. thought that was a t-shirt hanging. And oh, I thought yeah? he going to be able to put a t-shirt yeah. <laughs> If we're going to do anything in this, bit, this short playthrough, it's going to be get this guy bloody dress. Yes. I think there's a shirt right back at the start of the game You're before joking. you left that cave. Right, did you open this? No, I don't think so. Hooray. That makes sense. There it is. Let's get that on. Our quest is over. The day is there saved. You go. We have a shirt. So what are we going to try and do in oh. this, this playthrough? What are our objectives? I believe right now we're trying to navigate my ship. Once. And not fall through a hole. Yeah. So. <laughs> Let's get into the cot. <laughs> I, I, had, I had just aspirations of like, you know, space dog fighting, space what, swashbuckling, is, general space is adventure. Is Sarah was. Morgan supposed to be here? Yes. Yeah. Okay, let's chat to Sarah Thanks for giving me a moment She's a friend. Of time. I promise this won't take. I thought you deserved. You've almost Sarah Morgan is a member of the Constellation Group, who are the core cool. group that you uh, interact with in the game. Uh, they send you on little missions. They're ex space explorers. Uh, they go, go, go find us cool things and go and find these cool floaty artifacts. And I've done exactly none of their quests. I immediately went and became a space pirate because <laughs> you're calling. That's my calling. Yeah, absolutely. I just so uh, as the Starfield expert, then Jamie, the default by default, more than more than more than the anything. person who has played it. Yeah. So I'm, all right, am I glad to? to Delago is dead. Oh, Delgado is the guy I killed for my scarf. Okay. That's a spoiler. Cool. Apologies. You got the scarf. I've got a lovely scarf. <laughs> oh, well, we closed that loophole then. That's good. We, we closed what that. What was the question? Loop. Sorry, dude. No, no, no. I was just going to say, so like from um, other Bethesda games, Skyrim, Morrowind, Fallout, have you spent much time on those? 
Yes, so uh, I actually want to correct something you said in the intro. Um, one of the developers of this game actually said it was more like uh, a game called Oblivion, which is the one that came before Skyrim. Mm -hmm. uh, Oblivion was one of the first RPG games I properly played. Uh, I played it with my brother back when I was like seven, and, and it was one of the ones that actually made me absolutely fall in love Amazing. with the idea of an RPG game. Becoming myself <coughs> in a fantasy world and running around Sorry. slaying dragons and flying spaceships and meeting intergalactic cowboys we as We have Chris a literal has. escape space cowboy. Space cowboy, Brilliant. yeah. Well so, turned. Oh, we have reached like the cockpit. Right. right. I have no idea how to fly this thing, so you're going to have to talk me through it. Okay. So it does prompt you for quite a lot of it. Um, when you, when you, uh, yeah, so you, you should be able to just take off by clicking the take off button. Uh, I can't read what it is from here. Space, space bar, and we're going to get a lovely shot of Next. my very expensive spaceship flying off into the ether. There we go, look at it go. Really nice. Essentially a loading screen, but like, it just, they made it look really good. Yeah, you get to see your spaceship do cool things. So, just so we're clear what Chris needs to do next, right? Is he flying somewhere? Yes. I'm, 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 checking, I'm checking with the commander over there. <laughs> I'm checking. Wait, does Chris need to fly somewhere or blow things up? Just so we can. We are going to fly somewhere first. Okay. Chris, I recommend you don't shoot anyone currently in front oh, of us. Sorry. Are you shot. <laughs> so. I didn't know. How do I accelerate? You're being shot Let's at shift. by the entire UC Navy currently. Okay, that's. Uh, you may want to click M for me. M? Uh, well, no, I just want to run away. That's um, what the M button does. Okay, M. Ah. Uh, and then click Tab for first. me. Oh. And we're going to look at the universe map. To click tab again. This is the world map of mm. Starfield. Uh, you should see on top of one of the planets, if you look around, it will pan with your mouse. So if you go to the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see the rest of the world. Okay. And you should be able to see a whole bunch of different planets. One of them will have a little blue uh, uh, hexagon above it. There you that go. Mm. If you just move over to that one for us. We should be able to right click, there we go. And what we're going to do is we're going to jump to this planet. We might encounter some problems because the people Chris has just shot at are the people who we are doing this mission for. So if you select the planet for me. Uh, the blue hexagon. Yes, just click on the planet. And there should be a warp button somewhere. Or if you scroll around the planet, there should be a little another hexagon. We're looking for a lot there of hexagons here. You click on that one. Yeah. Yes. I mean, these guys were long distance away from the ones Chris just shot, so they yes. might not even know yet. So we, how was I supposed to know I wasn't supposed to shoot them? Um, <laughs> hold down X for me, and we should be able to immediately jump there. And then just survive. Um, well, you might have to move some bars into your grab drive. Hold down uh, Alt for me. Uh, alt. And then if you use the arrow keys on the left hand side, there's some power bars. What we need to do is we need to power up the grab one. So if you click S a whole bunch of times, you'll take power out of something. And then uh, you've put them into the grab drive. However, I believe your grab drive has been exploded. Okay. Uh, you may be about to die. No, um, no, we'll run away. Let's be fine. Is it, is it saying charging? Grab, grab jump, jump pending. Just waiting grab on drive the... offline. It may fix itself. Your lovely crew who you were speaking <laughs> to, Sarah, she's working on it. And I will mention, the space cowboy does bring his daughter with her, with him, uh, when he's on adventures. So she's currently on board. Okay. So, uh, I believe she's 14. Oh, so, so... T t you you t may t be about to... <laughs> yeah. With a... Yeah. No pressure. Mm. This has become a rescue mission. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just think that could have been articulated a bit better. That this is before you shoot. took off. This is why I asked, what does Chris need to do? Not shoot anybody. I believe I said. <laughs> and we, yeah. If we could, yeah. if we could, in the, in the post-production, could we get a clip of me saying, don't shoot anyone yeah. from when I said it, when I was asked. Okay. Chris, I recommend you don't shoot anyone currently in front oh, of us. Sorry. Is this a grab, do, uh, grab drive? It's powered up. We're just waiting on, we're just waiting on it to, um, I don't think you. I don't think you've got bars now. I oh no, it's missiles just been, are it's just been taken out. This is on. unfortunate. Right. Riveting <laughs> gameplay because you've got an entire military after you. And you're say, doing great. I was going to say it started so well, but it didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, I mean, there's got to be a way of like sending up the white flag, doesn't there? No, no. 
I don't oh, okay. believe so. You 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 had a pop at the people who were guarding the home planet of the uh, the United Colonies, uh, and frankly, I don't think they appreciated it. Right. Well, they really mercifully, didn't. <laughs> mercifully, Chris has been destroyed. So let's. This is going to reload your last save. So, so fortunately, we did a save just before we got into yes, the ship. We did. So <laughs> this time. Let's try and avoid... It may have auto-saved when you went into space as well. Oh, good. good. <laughs> Wonderful. Gaming, everyone. <laughs> so what so, do you think so far, Chris? I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, I wasn't expecting that to go quite so explodey quite mm. so quickly. But, you know, here we are. Oh, okay. Right, okay, so we've all saved. you just got to navigate the ship again. Oh, if you've not made it easy to find your way around, that'd be a... So Deej, I'm open to any questions you may have. I'm going to ask, Star yeah, Wars. yeah, no, no, absolutely. I wanted to touch on um, <laughs> the actual map, <laughs> um, the uh, the space map that we were looking at a minute mm. ago, because like the difference between that and the other Bethesda games is massive, right? But let's just get Chris back in the cockpit so we can see that map again. Um, and then we'll have a, you know, we'll, we'll talk on it. Because I mean, the main difference yeah. uh, for me, and you'll be able to tell me way more about this, oh. is the procedural generation mm, right, uh, yes. the, that we've got now in in, in um, Starfield, because I've, I've, I've never encountered that you know in a Bethesda game before. Everything was handcrafted. So, mm. what as someone who's put a few hours in, have you noticed sort of the, does it hold up in your opinion? So I've played about 22 hours, and a lot of what I've played is the quests. But mm -hmm. what I've also done is I've just sort of randomly flown around places. Mm. And one of the things I really liked is there are like auto-generated sort of like things that happen. So mm. I've, I've, I've traveled to like a, um, a star system in search of gold and fun. Uh, and I encountered like a, a derelict spaceship with the, these lovely two gentlemen on board who they were having their anniversary of when they met their, their like romantic anniversary and what they were doing was they were going around and you've made the same mistake again Chris I at some point at a point there is no helping you <laughs> but yeah they, they were lovely they gave me um, they gave me some ship parts as part of their like anniversary tradition that was quite nice and have you only sort of seen it is as a, that being unique those kind of encounters like do they tend to sort of crop up or you know repetitive or they've done a pretty good job with it I think they've done pretty well. Awesome. Um, I, I'm, I've not got too deep into it, yeah. but I, I've, I've enjoyed the bits I've seen so far. Right, let's... So, we're sort of in a similar position <laughs> because Chris once well, again took a pot shot. <laughs> I did, right, okay, in my defense on this occasion, what I was actually trying to do, I, I <coughs> right clicked, not left clicked, and I thought that was the scan button. Right, okay, so I probably should specify all of the buttons on that mouse will shoot some kind of weapon. Oh, okay. Yes. That wasn't what I was expecting. Mm. That... So, so maybe we can just fly here now. Maybe mm. you haven't had your engines blown up yet. So yeah. How, so what do I need to press? What click yes. Yes. And then um, there's a mechanic you're going to need to very quickly get to grips okay. with. There's some bars in the bottom left corner, yeah. and they correspond to the power uh, that each individual ship system has. Okay, yeah. There's one on the far side that says grav. That's okay. your gravity drive. That's what's going to move you across space. It's got nothing in it currently. What you're going to want to do is when you hold down Alt, uh, it uses W, A, S, and D. Yeah. S and D will move you between the different bars. Okay. And then W and S will lower or um, add power or take away power from whatever bar you've currently got selected. So what you need to do is take power out of one of them and put it into the grav drive. Right, so A and D, left and right. Yep. W and S. Adjusts. Yes. Right. Okay. Going to have to do Here this we go. very quickly. Hold it down. Hold it down. There we go. So right. hold down Alt. Uh, Alt. There you go. You've taken it out of your engines. Now you need to just put it into your grab drive. So hold down Alt again. Alt. There you go. Hold down Alt while you're doing it. Boop. There we go. Your gravity drive is powering up, and off we go. There we are. That was easy. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll, we'll make this look like that. it that happened. That was brilliant. <laughs> I think that was quite successful. Yeah. We'll make this look like it happened much quicker right. in post. So, <laughs> so what you're going to need to do now is you're going to need to land on the planet. So if you click M again. OK. Do I need some engines? Uh, we're going to be jumping out of the ship. Okay. Um, 
So I'll press M again. Frankly, because I want to take my baby away from you. <laughs> uh, you hover over the land bit. Yeah. And if you if you click onto it, yeah, it should just say land, and then we can land and get on with the little mission. Good. I'm not sure what happens from here on in. Okay, cool. Because well, I haven't done like. this bit. A little Exciting. bit of exploration. Yeah, why not? Exciting stuff. I wonder how long I'm going to survive. <laughs> as long as you don't start shooting the first thing <laughs> the that you see, I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm <laughs> sure we'll be fine. It's not that I'm trying. I'm pretty sure I left right clicked last time as well. It's, uh, it's, I'm blaming this all on James' key bindings. <laughs> they are the default key bindings. Yes. <laughs> Here we go, we've landed. Uh, and what we're doing is we are trying to discover why colonists on this planet have gone missing. So, we were talking about the procedural nature of this thing. Mm. How many of the missions and stories are procedural, or is, is the stories uh, manually written? And so, it's a mix of both. So, we're currently in like a set area because we're doing a quest um, that's been designed. This is a designed quest. However, there's a lot of areas inside of Starfield that use a procedural generation system. Uh, so, what you can find is you can find like uh, lost outposts, and sometimes those will have resources inside them that you can grab um, but this one this one is a set quest so this area would have been designed okay it's a nice mix of the two and it's something bethesda does a lot um, in skyrim um, there's uh, like sort of auto generated kind of uh, encounters as you're wandering along the road it's there to add a little bit of pacing no, to that is, your exploration that's a really good point actually i said before they haven't really used procedural generation but i suppose they had like the quests and things mm -hmm. I remember when, um, I'm sure it was Oblivion, when Oblivion came out they made a big, um, there's a big sort of um, uh, fuss made about Radiant AI and that's because that's what they used in Oblivion and it was like meant to, it was one of the, it was one of the first real times that like a, a sort of AAA game had got NPCs who were going to mimic real life and sort of have their own daily agendas and things and yes. go, you know, they'd go to bed, they'd go to the bar, they you know, and, it was it was pretty cool, and I think like what it added to the sort of the, the general right world here. building was awesome. It is fantastic. I think they dialed that back down a little bit in in, in the more recent ones because this hasn't got quite that level of or has it? Has, do so people sort of go to bed and go to work and stuff? The NPCs, the, the mm, AI? Or? No, um, they sort of more. I, I, I don't think they have set mm, routines mm, like mm. they used to. Um, some of them may do. But I know for a fact that a lot of them are just random, like random, like background actors. Yeah. Uh, one of the main differences between this title and what Bethesda has done previously with their titles is, in every other title uh, that Bethesda's done, all of the characters are they're, they're like built, designed characters. In this one, they have a lot of background actors who are automatically generated. Sure. Chris, where we are? So where are we, we've, we've I've followed the the blue hexagons and found. Um, Adrian, mm -hmm. and she's just told me about what a terramorph is. Mm -hmm. I managed to. It what? seems like there's a lot of, of like narrative requirements mm -hmm. in uh, in Starfield. Like, is that throughout the game? So yeah, it's a role-playing game. So um, in this, you are given uh, you're, you're you're given space. You're given a representation of space, and your job essentially as a player uh, is to find what works for you as your um, your niche, what you like to play as. Um, when I'm playing fantasy games, I always end up playing like a wizard, and I will role play as a wizard. I do it's wizardy things. Um, am I allowed to mention other that. games on the podcast? <laughs> um, other games exist. <laughs> uh, other games do exist. Uh, but for example, in like Baldur's Gate, I'll always play like a, a magic character because I like playing around with like the whimsical mm. sort of nature of the world. But in in mm. in, in this, I, I became a space pirate because Good. that was fun and what the cool. Yes, I haven't cool. found a tricorn hat yet, which is quite disappointing. Uh, but I'm working on it. Mod it in. Mod it in. I mean, that that's one of the big charms of Bethesda games. If you can't find a hat, make one. Make a hat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How, what, do you know what the modding scene is like, and is is there much of like modding capability? Have they even released the the, the modding toolkit for Starfield yet? Do you know? I'm not sure, but I am uh, ninety. I'm, I'm sure that I've seen some Starfield mods. Sure, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, because it's that that's the other thing with Bethesda games, isn't it? That's what that's their bread and butter, and what keeps well, people the, playing Skyrim. They play into uh, players' creativity. For mm -hmm. example, um, they, they have a fully built ship building tool in this where mm. you can make your own ship from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, you can customize your character however you want. Um, this game in particular has uh, pronoun options, which mm. is really, really cool. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's built in a way that it's like, make this your own. 
Yeah. Love it. No, yeah. That's really cool. Just um, just whilst whilst it was in my head, just to do with like modding and stuff. I, did, have you ever done any sort of game modding yourself? Just like, out of curiosity. I have. Anything you can, I, I was going to say. Anything uh, you can talk about <laughs> because. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's. It, it's interesting because I know a, for a lot of people, and I think I've mentioned this before, like modding in games is a way for that the, mm. they get mm -hmm. into the industry, right? You know, like it, it, or they get into this field because you're starting with a pre-made game. You're starting with all the rules and all the assets there, and it's a nice little way of sort of getting into it by just going in and tweaking some things and you know writing a small script or making your own small model and, and seeing it come alive. It's um, it, it, a lot of people saw it. That's where they get hooked. Do you think it. that was that was potentially more true in the past I'll than it is now? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, it's certainly Plans a load of people, you know, uh, getting their start from get modding things like Unreal Tournament and, and so on. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's, that that, that community is still as strong as it was? I think so. I mean, it, uh, back uh, a long time ago, it was almost out of necessity. Like the, the mod tools might not have been so. Um, sort of user friendly, but people figured out how to use them and add, make additional content. I mean, taking the example of Bethesda at the minute, you know, they, they release their modding tools sort of freely, and um, if Starfields aren't released yet, I'm, I can't remember off the top of my head, I imagine they will be soon. Mm -hmm. You know, and like these games, sort of, the, the things that people do to these games, yeah. you know, it, and so I'm trying to think of some other examples of like very popular modding tools. One of the way, and it's not going to be a popular one, but one of the ways that I got into game creation was in an old game called Star Wars Jedi Academy. Yes. Right, and yeah. you, you played as one of Luke Skywalker's students. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. However, it had a really adaptive um, in game console, mm -hmm. so you could access like the commands. And what I would do is I would I would set up like um, Jedi versus Sith like big brawls, and I got exactly to see the them same. all hitting each other with lightsabers, and essentially breaking the game because it was not designed to have that many characters running around on screen at any one time. Yeah, brilliant that was. Uh, built built on Quake Three. Quake, Quake Three, three engine. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, uh, Quake was sort of started a lot of the modding, uh, a lot of the modding scene. Myself included, I got into uh, creating games because of mods for Quake a long, long time ago. But yeah, there's, there is a lot of sort of you know um, sort of user-friendly modding tools for games. Although my mind is going blank on other ones. Pretty sure Baldur's Gate 3 has got its own fair share of mods. Baldur's Gate 3 does, mm. and that's because uh, the community is very much based in the Dungeons and Dragons style of game. Yeah. Um, it's what's it's the tabletop game that the game is based on. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that D&D is so well known for is the concept of homebrewing content, which mm -hmm. is making your own content to go into your world. Mm -hmm. um, so it's entirely understandable that Baldur's Gate 3 is also getting the same thing. Um, one of the more recent ones I've seen is Baldur's Gate 3 only contains like a few of the subclasses that you can have for your character in a and d so people have been modding in their own versions of um, subclasses and classes. So I've seen like the Artificer being played, which isn't something that's in there. Awesome, awesome. What are you up to? Yeah, what are you doing? Well, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> All the lights have just gone off. So it said I had to, I had to fix this security system. And I, I, I think I've turned on the tracking system. Mm -hmm. And it's on and with an active frequency. I had to do that in the control room. Mm -hmm. um, the automated defences, uh, the eviscer... Why is there an evisceration building? Yeah, I... I, I mean, that's no good. Let's steer clear of that. Power mm. fault detected. System power reset required. Uh, main issue, please reset all power breakers. So I think I need to find the power breakers. What I've set you up for, Chris, is your true fantasy, which is being an electrician in space. <laughs> yeah, quite. <laughs> oh, so I've got, I've got a new backpack. I'm sure that'll be useful. Mm. Um, somewhere I need to, I think I need to find some breakers. This, what, the, these quest markers on, those things on your hood, that's... That's a red thing. Right. Uh, no. So this is actually one of my, one of my, I don't, I don't understand why, but one of my favourite things in games is when it gives you a computer to poke. Oh. In, uh, I'm going to go back to another Star Wars game, uh, Star Wars Knights of the Republic 2, there was a bit where you could increase a skill, but you could splice into computers and hack them and break robots and things like that. I was meant to be a Jedi and I became an IT guy, which I thought was fantastic. 
it, it, it is an awesome thing, though. I mean, because I'm the same. I just love sort of snooping around on people's PCs in, in, in worlds that let you do it. Mm. Like, it's just interesting. that's a felony. Not, not in real life. <laughs> not in real life. Um, but Realize like, I'm sat here describing crimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love, love the crimes. Um, no, but like, it's it's a re from like a design point of view. What Chris is reading now, like when you know you sort of you go onto a, a PC in a game, you read a, an email log or something. It, it's almost like an easy design win because, like, from a, a creative point of view, you just got to stick some some creative text on the screen and tell the story. You know, it, you're building the world just through rather mundane things and it just makes everything feel a bit more lived in and alive mm. so you know it, it's a cool little thing there was one thing i wanted to ask you, chris about yeah. ai and sort of ai because we we're on about procedural generation yeah, yeah. earlier and ai generate you know ai is obviously a hot topic at the moment and like the creation mm. of assets in a game and stuff now procedural and ai aren't the same thing are they obviously or are they <sighs> so yeah <laughs> right they can be mm -hmm. i mean Realistically, what a, what a procedural system is is any. Um, I mean, yeah, it, it, it's like fingers and you know fingers uh, fingers and toes. And it's like fingers and thumbs. Right? Sure. Um, not all AI is procedural, and not all, but all procedural is in some respect AI. Mm -hmm. And what a procedural system does is it effectively takes a set of rules that are defined by the player or, or the uh, the programmer, mm -hmm. and it follows those rules to build something. You know, if we think of um, a house, for example. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Look to your right. What? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Uh, uh. So the one time you should be shooting something, and you're, and you're, and you're not. Ah. Oh. Let's, so just, let's just turn this on. Did I turn it on? The uh, the quest Chris is currently playing is actually a spoof or a, uh, a homage to the old uh, well, Alien. Uh, you can hear in the background there's a little beeping noise which is actually uh, the motion sensor that you get, uh, well, that you see inside of Alien that Ripley has. Uh, and that big thing there is what uh, the colonists have been, have been dealing with all this time. What I have neglected to do is provide Chris with enough ammo to deal with this. I mean, that health um, bomb is not going down, is it? I mean, no. Chris's is, well, but yeah. the, the, alien, <laughs> the Alien's is not, so... Um, oh, something exploded then. Yeah. Is that you? Uh, I, don't I was going to say, me. it probably can't point. climb stairs. Oh, no. Man. Well, there Ooh, you that's go. That's unfortunate. Death number three. Ding. <laughs> There's the, well, I get a death counter put oh, in. Doing well so far. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, back to... Yeah, yeah back, finish your thought. Back to procedural. Um, it, it's like, think of a house, right? We, we know the, 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 the basic components of a house. They have walls, they have a roof, they have a door. They usually have windows. Mm -hmm. um, and we can construct in the head. We know the difference between... Uh, say a shed mm. and a house and a garage and a house and when we look at one we can tell the difference between the two and that's because we know the rules behind how those things are built yeah. what a procedural system tries to do is copy those rules or kind of recreate rules in a way that makes sense so it's not random mm -hmm. um, you know if you imagine trying to build a, a Lego house by just throwing bricks at a board it doesn't it random <laughs> doesn't work yeah the procedural is all about the rules that it follows um, so, you know, there's, there's rules to the way we, we structure sentences, there's rules to the way that we, we build roads, the way that we put houses against mm, streets, mm. things like that. Um, if Marini, you know the rules, you can, you can usually try to create something that recreates them. I think my only critique there is that you mentioned a Lego house and you've got a redhead next to you and you didn't make an Ed Sheeran joke. <laughs> Just in terms of content, that would have been fantastic. Oh, I'm not I don't down. get that. <laughs> I'm not down with that. Right, we probably should wrap this up shortly. I am. I want Chris right to go and just have one more crack at this alien. Right. Is it nearby? Do we know? Well, there's a. I mean, there'll the be, a, there'll be a, a beeping noise. I think I just need to turn on the, the bits and bobs. I mean, there isn't. There, there is an evisceration building somewhere that yeah. might help. You there is full damage in the game. You haven't got time to be doing boring stuff like turn on bits and bobs. You need to go and just, just have one more just crack at something. A leg. Have I? Yeah, if you go escape for me, I'll show you a cool system this has got. If you go escape and then, uh, oh, not escape, sorry. Uh, tab. Uh, there's a, if you look on the right hand side, there's a status bit. Uh, if you look just there, I think if you take, oh, yeah. click B, you should be able to open it up. You've got a dislocated limb. 
Oh, There's oh really God. cool dynamically generated uh, injuries you can get in this. Like you can get gunshot wounds, you can get burns. I got lung damage oh, at wow. one point. Uh, but yeah, you've, you've dislocated a leg. As someone who has dislocated a, a knee, uh, you wouldn't be running around like this character is. They're getting on with it, aren't they? Yeah. Right, all things considered. <laughs> not, oh. They're toughing it out, which is, you know, not possible because <laughs> their bones aren't in the right place. <laughs> right, okay, let's talk to you, that's fine. Right. So should we just try and find Just some? let's Let's just try and just, just avenge ourselves. <laughs> I want to let's try and finish on the high that we deserve. We got that beep going on. No. Nah. Can I make a recommendation? Yeah. Shoot something. Things tend to be drawn towards the sound of bullets. Well. <laughs> it was sure. around here, wasn't it? This is where I got Now you're just the guy shooting a lamppost. We've got a whole universe to explore. <laughs> and, and, you're, and you're shooting a lamppost. But that's the beauty of RPG games. Because you can be you whoever want. you want to be. If you want to be a guy shooting a lamppost, go and be a guy shooting a lamppost. I'm not going to judge you. Fill your boots. As long as you don't shoot the wrong yeah. uh, ships. Right. You're since you're not. I wanted to finish on a high, right? But since you are literally the highest point that you've been so far, like geographically, I think we will call it there. <laughs> <laughs> and we can give us a glorious vista. And what have we got? Vista. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a hill. Beautiful. Procedurally oh, generated hill. Oh, and lightning. On there you go. Magic. That's a V effect, that is. Yeah, it, there you go magic stuff. Alright folks, we will leave it there. Thanks for joining us on this epic adventure. Not quite so much around the galaxy, but more of like, oh gosh, more of around the backyard of M-Moon. On fire! <laughs> we'd love to hear what you think of Chris's just just rampant piracy in the comments. Uh, and don't forget, there's a lone of episodes of Level of Detail on our YouTube, so please do check them out. Until next time, it's bye from me and my wonderful guests, Chris and Jamie. See you next time.